Hi, I'm Charles with Anycap. The story begins at a magical academy where a talent for magic is valued most. Our protagonist, Will, has no aptitude for magic and wonders if there's any way for the talentless like him to advance at a magic academy. He isn't sure, but Will frequently goes to dungeons to slay monsters so that he can get stronger even if he can't use magic. One day at the academy, the distracted Will gets called to the front of the class. He is told to conjure a flame using a catalyst, but Will trembles in fear because of his lack of magical talent. Of course he fails to conjure anything, and the entire class laughs at him. The instructor is really disappointed because this academy is very prestigious, and it's embarrassing how Will can't even use the most basic magic. This makes it clear to the instructor why Will is said to only be an honor student when it comes to note taking. He says that Will is completely beyond help. Just then, a student named Sion conjures an amazing flame from his seat. Sion gives an insincere apology by saying that he was just helping Will. The instructor puts out the flame and declares that this was an example of how in this world, the supremacy of magic is absolute. Magic is strength and mages are their heroes. At the academy, a student's talent for magic is how they earn a higher rank. However, a no-talent student that can't even use a bit of magic has no right to be at an academy that gives rise to powerful sages. After class, Sion mocks Will for going into the dungeon again because he's just going there to take out Small Fry and scrape up some credits. Some girl named Colette intervenes, but Sion can't understand why an honor student like her would defend such a nobody. Colette declares that Will is the hardest worker she knows and she refuses to let anyone insult her friend. Everyone is shocked to hear her speak this way, but Sion points out that it takes a lot more than hard work to become a Magia Vander. Will stands no chance at becoming one, and Sion is done wasting his time with a no talent like Will. Sion agrees with the instructor as he tells Will to drop out of the academy, but Colette tells Sion to get lost already. Colette consoles Will by pointing out that there's something wrong with their professor, but Will can't blame him because he is right. Will does some smooth talking and tells Colette that as long as he has a cutie like her by his side, then he doesn't care about anything else. Colette gets really flustered and Will apologizes because he was taught at a young age to compliment girls. He says that her cuteness is completely objective though and this just gets her even more flustered. Colette reminds herself that she is the heir to a noble and she must remain composed. Just then, Colette becomes concerned because Will has gone completely silent, and he explains that he's just admiring how nice of a day it is. Colette then explains that the Magia Vander, who are the most powerful wizards, continue to uphold the sky. Long ago, people were trapped in darkness and didn't even know about the existence of the sky. The world was being terrorized by something called the Celestial Host, but five wizards rose up against them. The wizard sent the invaders packing and they cast a seal over the sky while bringing peace to the world. The title Magia Vander is a title given only to the strongest and it has been passed down for ages. When Will was younger, some girl named Elferia told him stories about what lies on the other side of the sky. There is said to be a beautiful sunset that turns all kinds of things bright red. She thought that if they could become Magia Vander, then they would be able to see the sunset. Will wanted them to see it together, so they swore that they would. Will realizes now that this was just a childish promise, but Elfiria was the real deal. She was an incredible talent, and she became the youngest to ever earn the Magia Vander title. Because of this, she left to the top tower, and the talentless Will was left behind. Will is unable to give up on the promise they made, so he works hard so he can stand beside her one day. Afterwards, Will is scolded by Professor Workner for going to the dungeon again. The worst part is that Will went to the 7th floor and Workner fears that Will will lose his life one day. Will apologizes and sheepishly asks about his credits, which just gets Workner more upset. Will did eliminate an evil guard in the dungeon though, so Workner awards him with 2 credits. Will couldn't be any happier and Workner is shocked that he hasn't given up on becoming a Magia Vander. Will wonders what is so wrong about that, so Workner explains the difficulties that lie ahead for him. Before heading to the tower, Will will have to advance to the upper institute. To do that, he will need to be proficient in the three curricula. The curricula are writing, spellwork, and praxis. He will need a ton of credits in all three of them, but Will can't use magic and he will never be able to earn spellwork credits. Will knows this very well, which is why he focuses on collecting praxis credits in the dungeon. Unfortunately, Workner must remind Will again that advancing through praxis alone is impossible. Will gets pretty dejected, so Workner lifts his spirits by telling him to forget about becoming a Magia Vander. 
Instead, he needs to worry about actually graduating from the academy. Will fail to earn credits in the most recent exam, which means he needs to earn 4 credits by the end of the week. There are only 2 days left, so Will desperately searches his notes to find a monster worth 4 credits. Workner wants to help him but he doesn't want to get in trouble, so he says that he's simply talking to himself and he reveals some report about a certain monster on the 6th floor of the dungeon. It's called a Baskerville and it's exactly what Will needs, so Will thanks the helpful professor. Unfortunately, Sion heard everything. He comes up with an evil plan and he is sure that it will finally get rid of the no talent scrub who is out of his league in this academy. A while later, we find Will on the 6th floor of the dungeon. Will has fought a Baskerville before, so he's eager to earn his 4 credits. He tells his worried cat friend not to worry because he will avoid the monster's flame breath so they don't get burned to a crisp like last time. Nearby, Sion and his cronies search for the monster. They want to take care of it before Will does so that he will be expelled for being short on credits. Sion's buddies are worried about being on the 6th floor, but Sion reminds them that he is one of the elites at the school. Sion has some serious issues as the very sight of seeing Will offends him. He doesn't even believe that a no talent loser should even be able to speak about the Magia Vanders and he thinks Will doesn't deserve to be at the academy. Just then things take a horrifying turn as a monster utterly eviscerates one of Sion's men. This thing is terrifying as the kid's blood drips off its fists and Sion's friend screams in horror. Will hears the scream and rushes forward as he fears that someone is being attacked. Will demonstrates incredible speed and arrives to see Sion in battle. He is shocked to see that the monster is an evil sentinel because he has never seen one in person before. This beast is incredibly dangerous and it's worth 10 credits. This terrifying monster usually resides in the lower levels of the dungeon so Will wonders why it's there. The terrified Sion begs for the monster to stay away as he attacks it but his magic isn't having any effect. Sion doesn't stand a chance and Will realizes that the sentinel is on a whole other level. Sion desperately fires away but the fearsome beast just keeps approaching so Will decides that he has to do something. However, just then Will shocks himself as he wonders if he actually has any obligation to save Sion. Sion has done nothing but make fun of him and he has bullied Will to no end. His mind is flooded with memories of how poorly Sion treated him and he begins to think that leaving Sion behind to lose his life would be justified. However, Will remembers something that Elferia told him. She said that he was kinder and braver than anyone she has ever met and we see that she was the one that gave Will his glasses. Back to the present, Will says that Elferia was wrong. He isn't kind or brave, he just wants to do whatever it takes to stand beside her. Will puts on his battle glasses and dashes forward. He stops the monster's immense attack and declares that he will become a lone sword. Back at the school, Professor Edward urgently tells Workner that Sion and his buddies went to the dungeon without permission. Workner is in disbelief and Edward tells him to use his familiar to find Sion. The kids are in serious danger so Workner prepares to do so and asks what floor they are on. Edward explains that they went to the 6th floor and he is shocked when Workner declares that if they went to the 6th floor then there's no need to worry. Edward reminds him how dangerous the 6th floor is but Workner explains that everything is fine because that is the floor Will is on. Back in the dungeon, Will demonstrates his immense fighting ability as he fends off the sentinel and he manages to slice off one of its fingers. The infuriated beast tries to attack Will but the kid is just too fast. Will soars around the cave and easily deflects the debris that the monster throws at him. Eventually Will makes it onto the monster's back and Sion watches in shock as he can't believe that this is the same Will from school. The professors watch the fight from a crystal ball and Edward can't believe what he is seeing from Will. Workner then reveals that Will is a true outlier. He has superhuman strength that a mage would never possess and a body as tough as a dwarf's. That isn't all though as he also has incredible observation skills that allow him to grasp an enemy's strategies after seeing them just once. Will demonstrates this by dodging an attack the monster just used and he uses this opening to slice its arm off. Workner concedes that Will cannot use magic but in this world filled with magic users, Will is the one and only warrior. Will now takes the monster's giant sword and as the beast becomes infuriated, Will gets ready for an attack. Sion hasn't moved an inch this entire time as he is stunned by Will's strength. The monstrous beast unleashes a powerful beam attack but Will stops it with the sword. 
Werkner continues to explain how powerful Will is by declaring that his slash of the sword surpasses even lightning. Will shows just that as he slices right through the monster's beam, causing massive damage everywhere, and the monster is utterly defeated. Will shows concern for Scion, but Scion is so angry that he makes himself bleed from the mouth. Edward is just as upset as he refuses to believe that someone who can't use magic is able to surpass magic. A while later, Will returns to the academy to find the very upset Workner. Will did manage to eliminate the Sentinel though, so he officially awards Will 10 credits. Thanks for watching my recap. Subscribe to the channel to help us make the push to 700,000 subscribers.